Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit from Illegally Blonde who says, Am I the Arsehole for hanging up on my girlfriend after discovering her mum was spying during our personal conversations? I, 18 male, have been dating my girlfriend, 17 female, for about 7 months. Tonight, her and I had a deep conversation about some relationship hiccups. And I shared personal family struggles I typically only discuss with my therapist. As we finally got to a place we felt comfortable leaving things, I heard whispering in the background. When I asked my girlfriend about it, she adamantly denied anyone else being there. However, as I continued asking, she started crying. Just then, her mum pretended to come in the room and scold her for being up to try to cover up for the fact she'd been sitting there for an hour. Turns out, her mum has been sneakily listening on almost every serious conversation or argument we've ever had. I felt absolutely betrayed and hung up immediately. Since then, both my girlfriend and her mum have been apologising and trying to shift the blame onto me. This violation of privacy has left me feeling super violated and unsure how to handle the situation. I do feel bad for hanging up so abruptly, but I just didn't know how to process what was going on. Am I the arsehole for hanging up on my girlfriend after discovering her mum was spying during our personal conversations? Any guidance on navigating the situation would be greatly appreciated. Edit I woke up an hour ago and watched all the comments come in while eating a whole last margarita pizza. Nice. Thank you all for your advice and opinions. To provide more context. Throughout our relationship, my girlfriend has often joked about how her mum can get any information from her. However, I've witnessed firsthand how true this is lately. I've also noticed that my girlfriend doesn't respect privacy. Claiming she needs a confidant because my situations are too much for her mentally. But then her mum knows everything I share in confidence. I also have tried not talking to her, but she pushes every time. Because of this, I've become extremely cautious about sharing personal details. They are both very religious, and while I share the same beliefs, it's been a contentious issue in our relationship. Her mum has used religion to justify intruding on my personal life, citing the need to guide me if I'm sinning. My own family life has been challenging. I had to move out at 18 to escape. I talked to my own mother about all of this and her response was to say that it's not the worst thing and I was overreacting which is why I felt like posting. Her mum has expressed that she sees me as part of her family which has led her trying to control various aspects of my life like dictating when I can drink coffee or imposing a bedtime. She's also shared my private struggles with her pastor and best friend who've tried to intervene and fix me. I deeply care for my partner, but I can't envision a future where her mother's involvement is so intense in our lives. I plan to talk to her about this tonight and will update you all afterwards. Now, absolutely not the arsehole in this situation for hanging up the way you did. I would have done exactly the same. And, you know, like a lot of these stories, for me, it always comes down to trust. And that trust has been broken. You've been betrayed by her letting her mum listen in on your very, very private conversations. There's not very much coming back from that. And I just know from my perspective, it would be difficult to come back from that. I could just imagine another conversation you're having with her on the phone. Can you trust her again that her mum isn't secretly listening and they're just being a lot more secretive with it? Maybe going too far here, but possibly recording your conversations and listen back to it afterwards. There's a lot going on in this story for me. And the fact that, you know, the mum has clearly got a lot of control over the girlfriend at the same time. And, you know, I do feel sorry for her in that respect. But she's going to have to realize at the same time that this is not normal behavior. Whether you want to tackle that with her is, you know, down to your choice. I think for me personally, I would struggle after the first betrayal. But, you know, everyone's different, right? So someone asked, how did mum listen in? Opie said she sat in the room and my girlfriend had the phone on speaker. I thought nothing of it because she has always just put me on speaker in her room. Now I see why. Someone says a foundation in the relationship is trust. That's not there anymore and it's okay to break up. Opie said thank you. 
It's tough because there is so much good, but this was just so violating. I keep thinking what happens if a few months from now we have a really serious conversation and her mum wants to be a part of it. Someone says there is a lot of red flags here. I definitely recommend speaking with your therapist. Opie says, I think this is a great idea. Thank you. I just bumped our appointment up now. A couple more comments. Timothy says, not the arsehole. You have every right to feel betrayed. If I found out my significant other had a parent eavesdropping during personal, sensitive conversations, I'd be devastated. Sounds like your girlfriend might be under her mum's control and not be allowed to live her own life. I sympathize with her, but you shouldn't be expected to pay the price for that sick dynamic. You didn't sign up for secret non-consensual polyamory with her and her mum. I am Maggie Moo says, not the arsehole. I would give your girlfriend the chance to explain to you in person, one-on-one, -on -one, what exactly has been going on. And I would ask exactly what she's been allowing her mum to listen to and why hasn't she told you. I reconsider moving forward whether you want a relationship with a person you can't trust. Trackless Tinder says not the arsehole. It is unclear to me how complicit your girlfriend was in this breach of your privacy. She may have been all right with her mother listening in. Or that may be her mother is overbearing and she did not have the choice in the matter. But even if that is the case, she should have said to you privately, don't talk about private stuff over the phone because my mum insists on listening. And there is nothing I can do about it. Either way, it should be considered a warning for you if you decide to continue in the relationship. And a final comment from PDK who says not the arsehole. You have escaped an abusive relationship with your own family. Your girlfriend's mum is being abusive to you and your girlfriend is allowing it. Your girlfriend is betraying your trust and allowing her mum to hear your confidential information. And her mum is trying to use that information to control you. They're also blaming you now. I suggest to discuss this with your therapist before talking to your girlfriend. But also look up terms such as gaslighting, enmeshment and Davo. Do not ignore all of the red flags. It's easier to get out of this relationship now than later. So Opie adds an update and says, she just called me at work. She started the conversation by saying she thinks we should probably break up because she can't do it anymore. I'll be honest, I snorted. She asked why and I responded by asking her if it was because she was scared to talk to me face to face or if it was because she just didn't want to deal with the fact she screwed up and hurt me. She said it was because I say everything is her fault context i know i have a lot of problems because of a really hard home life and upbringing i acknowledge when i make mistakes last night was mostly me having to apologize and explain myself over and over but this time i flat out told her this was 1000 percent her and her mum's fault i then had to go because i'm at work and people needed help i then got texts saying things like i guess this is all my fault and i deserve to sit in my consequences apparently she wants me to come to her house after work to sort things out. I think I'm going to see if we can meet alone in a public place to ensure privacy. I'll update after that. And if I wasn't checked out after that first post, I'm certainly checked out now. The way she's trying to switch this around on you. And it sounded like manipulation at the end there. I guess this is all my fault and I deserve to sit in my consequences apparently. She says apparently on the end. And she wants you to come to her house. I wonder if her mum would be lurking around in the background. That's the way it kind of feels like it would go down that path for me. But anyway, one and a half months later, OP gave a one line final update and says, we ended up breaking up a bit after. She apologized in the end, but the trust was gone. And, you know, I, it just feels like that is the best outcome for this story. And a lot of people talking about enmeshment after that one at the same time and you know it's i'm going to be certainly reading up a bit more about that i've heard of it in the past but never looked too much into it but after seeing a couple of examples it certainly seems like that but what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story and our next story comes from the relationship subreddit from a deleted user who says, My boyfriend and I had an argument regarding his female friend. I need to know the best way to approach her to fix this. My female 22, boyfriend 24 male, has a friend female 24, who as far as I know, has never been in a relationship. Ever since their friendship started, she would give my boyfriend a Valentine's gift every year. A few days ago, I brought my discomfort about this since I'm currently his girlfriend and told the friend I would appreciate it if she respect my request to stop giving him valentines. 
she disregarded my feelings, so I brought this up with my boyfriend who also disregarded my feelings, which led to me saying some hurtful things about the friend and even accused her of being in love with boyfriend and trying to keep him to herself. Ever since then, he's been ghosting me. He doesn't even come by the restaurant I work at anymore, where we met. I figured the best way to handle this was to talk to the friend. I still have her number. I also know where she lives and works. What's holding me back from talking to her is that I'm afraid that boyfriend told her what I said about her from our argument. What would be the best way to approach her? Edit. Yes, he did tell me I think we should break up and yes, I called the friend a virgin loser. And yes, she performs this Valentine's gift giving tradition to all of her friends and parents. I didn't mention these because I didn't think they were important. I just wanted to focus on making up with my boyfriend. I guess I didn't see what I requested was a big deal. I didn't think it would get this serious. There are a lot of people that were sympathetic and agreed that I was reasonable and I appreciate that sentiment. Although I would have appreciated more if they gave me the advice I asked for. That's why I came here. I guess my Valentine's has become my sad, considering this was the factor of our breakup. I'll stop contacting him at least until Friday. Give him a few days to reconsider. Maybe the next time he sees my text, he'll realize how much he misses me. So in the comments, Ploop says he hasn't responded to you for a few days, which from your post seems abnormal. When you said the hurtful things to him, how did he react in the moment? OP says he got quiet, but I can tell he was angry. I thought he was going to yell, but he didn't. Now he did say, I think we should break up, but he told me he thinks we should. I didn't believe this is final. He probably just needs some time to think. I want to get through to the friend first before things get worse. And there was a comment suggesting that OP has posted this before. They said, the last time you posted this, admittedly with much shittier language, everyone told you clearly that you were being an arsehole and this is nothing you had any right to intervene in. That hasn't changed just because you left out some of the least flattering details in this version. The only person who could talk to you about this is your ex and he doesn't want to talk to you. Spinner of Yarn says, if he said, I think we should break up and he's ghosted you, he broke up with you, it's over. There's nothing you can say to her that will make him do anything. No, Valentine's Day isn't just for couples. I've given and received cards from friends and family my whole life for Valentine's Day and I'm old enough to be your grandmother. Nephi Baby says sorry, but this is overbearing and ridiculous. I'm 35 years old and it hasn't been a year that I haven't given my friends something along with my partners. Valentine's Day isn't about romance. It's a hallmark holiday intended to share love to anyone. I've read your comments and you are setting this boundary about gifts under $10. Candy, a stuffed animal, a keychain, literally nothing else has happened. It's never anything romantic and it's been a tradition. And you had the audacity to call her names because you didn't get your way. Kind of wondering if you're the one he should be worried about. How in the world did you get that she was in love with him and trying to keep him for yourself over a cheap gift? Did you feel this way in school when we would trade valentines with the other kids? So OP did update the post and says, Granted, I knew this was a long shot, but I decided to contact the friend. Someone suggested me to show this post to my boyfriend, but I didn't do that because I thought he would ignore it just like all my other texts and calls. Instead, I decided to show some of the replies I got and to show the friend that this is weird behavior between friends. I'd ask if she can just be honest for once that she may actually do in fact have feelings for my boyfriend. She replied that she would like to speak in private and invited me to her apartment. This all happened yesterday. What I thought would be a conversation about trying to understand each other instead turned into a big dunk on me. She told me the reason she's telling this to my face instead of through a text is because since I'm acting immature about this whole thing, I'm going to talk to you like a child. She felt that even just the little things about her life that I shared with strangers and then showed their distorted judgment towards her was wrong. Pretty sure you'll share this too, but as soon as I finish what I said here and you walk out of here, I'm blocking your number and try not to think of you ever again, just like boyfriend's name is trying to do. I then brought up some family issues she would share whenever she wanted to get sympathy. She yelled at me and said, that's her life and she shares with her friends and said, I'm talking about her life to strangers to get your own sympathy. She then said, unlike you, I don't judge people's value based on relationship status or if they have sex or not. Boyfriend's name is an awesome person. He deserves every good thing in his life. I thought you can be one of them. 
I thought you were a funny and sweet person, and I liked how you made him smile. Now, whenever he thinks about you, he gets upset. And by the way, you two are definitely over. And no, I'm not going to help you understand about my lack of love life. There's nothing to understand. This is my life and you're not involved in it and you never will be. And you'll never be involved in boyfriend's name ever again. I was trying not to cry during this berating. Even when I broke down, she still kept talking while I couldn't even get a word in. I said I just want to talk to him, but she kept telling me to get out. When I calmed down a little in my car, I called my boyfriend. It automatically goes to voicemail. That's never happened before. I call it again, then it goes to voicemail. I think he finally blocked me. I think we're over. I think it took me like 30 minutes to feel okay to drive. My friends and roommates tried to comfort me, but I was too exhausted, so I just took a nap. I'm still not feeling all that great, but I'm going to try to move on. Now, usually I love a story where someone comes to Reddit for advice and they ask their question and, you know, they get berated and torn apart and all this sort of stuff. And then they're like, okay, I've learned my lesson and they learn something from that post. They change their behavior. It doesn't excuse their past for sure, but I love it when it's a learning experience for someone. But this post, man, I was just like, what? All the comments that I was looking through was pretty much telling OP that that relationship's over, move on, let them be, etc., etc. Some giving advice to maybe get contact in a certain way, but it seems like OP just like cherry picked the comments and was like, I'm just going to take the ones that that are siding with me 100%. And was going to approach the friend and tell her that it's weird behavior between friends. After all those previous comments, I was just like, wow, you know. And still, there was no learning by the very end of this post, it felt like to me. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's have one more cheeky story, shall we? And our next story is coming from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit. It doesn't have an update as yet. And it's from Bad In Law One, who says, Am I the Arsehole for ruining my brother in law's reputation by telling the truth to my friends? My in laws are currently furious with me for hurting my brother in law's feelings and reputation with my friend group. Recently, my single brother in law, Chris, 38 male, has been hinting at me to introduce him to women, and I've refused. Chris has been single for almost three years and he's been having a hard time meeting women. He tried flirting with my friend, but she had been cold and non-receptive. This was my friend Grace, 35 female. Grace is not interested in him due to his inability to be faithful and she wasn't physically attracted to him. He tried to flirtatiously engage with her during a small party my husband and I had last Saturday. My husband got a long awaited promotion, so we had a little party. During the party, Grace had grown frustrated with his incessant flirting and at some point told him in no uncertain terms that she found him physically ugly and that his physical ugliness is only surpassed by the ugliness of his character. Holy moly. She told him this in private so no other guests had heard a scathing review of his personhood. Chris left the party. The following afternoon while my husband and I were nursing a wicked hangover, my in-laws to my surprise called to scold me for having abused and embarrassed Chris. After a few minutes of us shouting back and forth on the phone, I reminded my husband that handling his family was his job. So while my husband argued with his parents, I reviewed our security cameras. And honey, Grace verbally tore him apart. Grace reminded him that he cheated and divorced his late ex-wife Lily while she was still battling cancer. And then he got dumped by the mistress for being a cheater as he continued to cheat on her. Grace told him that he wasn't a man of any significant value other than the few coins he had in the bank, and there's no way in hell she'd entertain his delusions of sexual grandeur and beauty. She also said the only thing he had going for him was his over-bloated job title as an executive director to a third-rate company that will probably collapse in the next five years. As a parting gift, she told him to consider some cosmetic work to improve his haggard appearance, and perhaps to start praying for divine intervention to fix his rotten soul, since there is no way a psychotherapist could have ever come close to fixing whatever is wrong with him. My in-laws and Chris feel that I shouldn't have told my friends what Chris did because he's now perceived by my girlfriends as a terrible person. I told them he was unfortunately a terrible person and people would have always found out what happened between him and the late, great Lily. I then discussed what happened with my colleague, Natasha. She said I was cruel for having told my friend group about what happened between Chris and his ex-wife 
Dr. Chris had grown a lot in the past two years and didn't need to be known for the worst thing he's ever done. Natasha is dating Chris's friend, so she also knows him. For your information, I've only discussed Chris's treatment of Lily with my direct friend group. That's only six people, and half of them already knew, as they were also friends with Lily. So it's not like I'm screaming, hear ye, hear ye, in the town square. Damn, Grace came out swinging, holy shit. But I think the fact of the matter in this situation is, you didn't ruin his reputation. He did that himself when he did what he did. And I can't really blame you for letting friends know about what happened basically if i saw a friend was going to get with someone with a potentially shady history i would certainly be raising it to that said friend at the same time as well but pleasant test says not the arsehole how can you be telling the truth be perceived as unfair chris did this to himself it was his behavior that is the problem why should you expose your friends to a potentially horrific relationship you know your brother-in-law is a cheater, but your in-laws want you to keep that from your friend so he can continue to take advantage without consequences. I think you did the right thing. Tangerine Bouquet says truth is an absolute defense to defamation, not the arsehole. What kind of friend would you be if you didn't warn your friends about his cheating? If he's grown, then he can prove that. You do not owe him any setups, much less ones you've lied to by omission. Thick Confusion says I love Grace already. Chris isn't in a position to complain about gossip since he went crying to his parents. Oh yeah. <laughs> but in the future, you should probably not invite him to functions where he might hit on your female guests and ruin their evening. Not the arsehole. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Would you handle this any differently? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for getting involved. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.